1989, the Berlin Wall comes down and the New York Times declares the Cold War over. China imposes martial law as pro-democracy demonstrators occupy Tiananmen Square in Beijing, and Milli Vanilli wins the 1989 Grammy Award for Best New Artist. The award is later revoked when it's discovered that their entire album was lip-synced. Of course, Microsoft was in the media spotlight too. In 1989, The Today Show taped an episode in Seattle featuring the company and Bill Gates. It was also a year of massive expansion for Microsoft, as it opened a sales office in Hong Kong and subsidiaries in Brazil, Israel, Belgium, Taiwan, and Puerto Rico. And the expansions weren't just geographic. On January 20th, the Microsoft Roadshow opened in Seattle, Washington, the first of 10 stops around the country. Dealers and corporate executives had a chance to try nine different applications, get a peek at three unreleased products, and attend specialty seminars on Excel and Word. Five days later, on January 25th, Microsoft unveiled a promotional campaign for Excel for Windows, targeting users who are considering purchasing or upgrading to future releases of Lotus 1, 2, 3. The following month, on February 15th, Microsoft announces that it will make a minority investment of a little less than 20% in the Santa Cruz Operation Incorporated, the world's leading developer and publisher of Unix system software. The big Microsoft events of 1989 continue on March 27th, when the company hosts the fourth international conference on CD-ROM, Seeing is Believing in Anaheim, California. is we believe that it's possible to create a platform for CD software. A platform where there'll be an installed base of over a million machines. And that platform will allow us to transform the PC into a far more powerful tool than it is today with its floppy based software. Later that spring on May 3rd, Microsoft and Ashton Tate announced the shipment of the Microsoft SQL Server 1.0 a powerful relational database server for PC-based local area networks. On the same day as the SQL announcement, Steve Ballmer is promoted to Senior Vice President. Ballmer had been Vice President of System Software since 1984, but he now reports directly to John Shirley, President. Microsoft begins the summer by forming the Multimedia Division on June 5, 1989. The division is dedicated to the development and marketing of multimedia system software and consumer products. A few weeks later, on June 19th, Office for the Macintosh is finally available. Now, this is the first ever version of Office, and Macintosh applications include Word 4.0, Excel 2.2, PowerPoint 2.01, and Mail 1.37. The four applications provide the tools to perform the essential business tasks of most business professionals. Also in June, Microsoft now sales surpass 2 million units. That's twice the number sold less than one year ago. Remarkably, it took Microsoft five years to ship the first million units, but it takes only one year to ship the second million. The following month, on July 18th, the Usability Group opens its new in-house testing facilities, where it will test interfaces, documentation, and instructional materials. Also in July, the first financial analyst meeting is hosted at the corporate campus. Speakers include John Shirley, Bill Gates, Frank Gaudet, Mike Maples, Jeremy Butler, and Scott Oakey. On August 1st, 1989, Microsoft announces Online Plus. It's a comprehensive software support service that gives corporations priority access to senior technical support staff. Now, the service includes unlimited telephone access through a private phone number and electronic access to high-level support personnel and an extensive database of product information. In mid-August, Microsoft encounters a PR hurdle when a Seattle Times cover article about the working environment at Microsoft alleges that Microsoft employees are working long and dedicated hours that preclude any personal life. In response to the article, proud Microsoft employees make Microsoft velvet sweatshop logo sweatshirts and wear them on August 18th. And on August 31st, as the month comes to a close, Microsoft reveals that a complete Chinese MS-DOS version 3.21 will be provided to licensed OEMs and shipped in the future by representatives in Taiwan. 
Now this will be the first time a retail version of MS-DOS has been made available directly to customers. Later that fall, on October 3rd, Microsoft announces the availability of Microsoft Flash File System, a file system for Intel's Flash memory technology. It allows the MS-DOS end user to use flash memory in exactly the same way as a conventional disk drive. But there is one last major event left for the company in 1989. Just before the year ends on December 27th, Microsoft announces that John Shirley will retire as President and Chief Operating Officer on June 30th, 1990. Shirley, President since August of 1983, will continue to play a role in the management of the company as a member of the Board of Directors and as a consultant for strategic projects. And while Microsoft's notable releases in 89 include Word 5.0 for MS-DOS, Microsoft Mail 2.0, Works 2.0 for PC, MS-DOS ROM 2.0, and Microsoft Basic Professional Development System 1.0, other news continued to shake the world, including a 6.9 magnitude earthquake in the San Francisco Bay Area. As the year drew to a close, the biggest movies at the box office were Batman, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and Look Who's Talking. But Microsoft was also doing blockbuster business, and by year-end, the company's sales totaled over $804 million, while the employee headcount swelled to over 4,000 people. Still, those sales figures would pale in comparison to the upcoming year, when Microsoft would finally cross the $1 billion annual sales mark.